next time this season we see an Opal on pole position. Paul Elizabethan, Sean Watson-Smith. Next to him, Englishman Mark Peters, one-tenth of a second behind Watson-Smith. Third position, the first of the BMWs, that's Sean Linda, 1994 champion. Next to him, last year's champion as well as 97 and 98 as well, Janil de Villiers in the second of the BP Nissans. And his teammate second in the championship last year, Duncan Foss. Just waiting for Anthony Taylor to join the grid in the first of the engine Audis. On the left-hand side of your screen, it is Sean Watson-Smith. Right next to him, Mark Peters. Behind them, Sean from Melinda and Sunil de Villiers, the reigning champion. And the man who won the last two races at A. Kyle Army as we are off. 20 laps to go, and it's Sean Watson-Smith taking the lead, and it seems like it's the BMW of Sean from Linda who moves into second, no, into third position. Mark Peters moving, uh, slotting behind Watson-Smith into second position, into the Conti S's for the first time. This is going to be a great race as we go on board with Sean from Linda in third, chasing Mark Peters and Sean Watson-Smith, the leading pair already pulling away from the rest of the field. This man is flying the BMW flag at the moment. Dos Santos is still fighting through former back. As they fly through Hangar Sweep for the first time and then hard on the brake down into first first gear for the uh, Honda Evans. Peter is going wide. Peter's are breaking himself. And that is not going to do him uh, any favors or the team any favors there. The track uh, is still very slippery from uh, previous races. Oh, one of the Audis out as well. It looks like Private Emil Stevens still coming to grips with the touring car as we go in car with his teammate Anthony Taylor in first position. Chasing after the BP Nissans of Foss and Neil de Villiers. But hard work right there for Neil Stevens, who's going to have to fight his way back up the field. It'll be interesting to see if he does come back uh, through the field, but uh, he will be very, very disappointed. He's almost with the pro cars, but it is Watson Smith, Fandalinda. There's uh, Janil de Villiers and Duncan Foss in the second of the BP Nissan and the first of the engine Audis. That is Anthony Taylor. He's up there as well. Watson Smith seems to be pulling away, loves this circuit, absolutely loves it. And uh, looks like. The billiard there. Here we look look again at uh, Mark Peters. Just slips off, as you said, Hendrik. Almost outbreaks himself, maybe took a dip. Yeah, that's a basic mistake on the relatively still cold tyres. But Watson Smith, as you said, uh, Jonathan, pulling away already from the rest of the pack. And here comes Neil de Villiers. Neil de Villiers who wants to get around Sean from the Linda, but he's not going to do it this time as they come up to complete lap number two out of 20. Watson Smith from Pony Linda. De Villiers is right there. And just get a gap, it was half a second previous fly time around. It is now almost a full second, 0.9 of a second. And De Villiers and uh, Duncan Foss are looking at getting to the front. Well, I think De Villiers having a go at Sean van der Linde. Already a bit of bodywork coming off of Sean van der Linde's car, as we saw at Kyle Army in the last two rounds. But uh, De Villiers is the man to watch in the second of those Nissans. He is on a charge. He is the fastest man, really, in touring car this year. And um, as we see, it's van der Linde once again, who uh, seems to be holding up the two Nissans. But Taylor, right on the back of Duncan Foss there. So uh, that Audi also flying, but... Uh, into the right-handed hairpin. We've got Watson Smith, Van der Linde, De Villiers, Duncan Foss, Anthony Taylor having a look on the outside of Duncan Foss. I was watching earlier today through this sweep, Anthony Taylor is just amazing through there. Clips the curve and the car sideways all the time, but uh, he is a very exciting young driver. And Dion Joubert in the second of the Patronus Opals now having a look behind uh, Taylor. This is what touring car action is all about. Yep, and this is uh, there's going to be a lot of action still ahead of us. Uh, tires are going to come in again, as we mentioned last time, out at Kyle Army. Anthony Taylor under pressure there from uh, uh, Dion Joubert. And Taylor taking the inside line. He's, sh he's shielding himself against that, that uh, the wall on the outside of the pit lane. Uh, but the guys are now looking at each other. They are summing each other up. They're looking at where the weaknesses are, and where they can uh, find a little chink in the armor. But it's definitely uh, Sean van der Linde who is holding up the Villiers and Foss and the rest of the field. And uh, that is allowing Sean Watson Smith to pull away. The gap at the end of the previous lap was down to 0.7 of a second between Watson Smith and van der Linde. And see how van der Linde is defending. He's defending because he knows that the champion is coming and the champion wants fast. The champion wants to get to the front and win once again. He won the last two races out of Kyle Army. That's van der Villiers we're talking about in the leading BP Nissan Primera. Duncan Foss's teammate is right there behind him. And they are now also starting to pull away from Anthony Taylor, who is defending against Dion Joubert. Well, Sean Watson-Smith, when I spoke to him earlier, was, uh, did, was his, his main worry was Jimmy de Villiers. And Sean van der Linde is doing Sean Watson-Smith a great big favour here because he's allowing the Opal to pull away slightly a second.
second, uh, just under a second he is ahead now. Sean Watson-Smith is going to be delighted with this. Here's De Villiers having a look. Smoking oh, crack ball. He's lost it. Don't just go, and go, go on the inside. He's very rarely do you see a mistake from Janiel De Villiers. He is trying so hard to catch up with uh, Sean van der Linde, and he's led his teammate Duncan Foss through. And one has to point out as well, of course, that the uh, Aldous Trebata circuit is a regular test circuit for uh, the uh, Opel and the Audi teams. And back uh, in the field, we've got the Banks and Pro Car battle going on between uh, Colin Hasty and it's George. Uh, the straight note is uh, Mark, Brian Mark, right there behind him. Well, this is a much closer battle than we are used to. It is uh, Neil Stephen trying to get past them there. We're in car with Mark de Cunha. He's in full, full chasing Brian Martin. Well, the Pro Car Series, we're going to be seeing uh, a lot more cars joining that throughout the year. I believe we've got two Jettas. We've got a BMW going to join them. Brian Martin has actually got another car coming to the fray as well. We're back with the leaders. Seven laps gone. We're on lap eight out of 20. Not even halfway yet. And it's a tactical race, believe you me. Lots of tactics being uh, applied here by these drivers. Sean van der Linde's tactic is to hold the back. <laughs> it certainly is. Duncan's trying everything to get past him. He'll have a look on the left-hand side probably as they come into the hairpin. Um, is he going to go up down the inside? Here goes Duncan, having a look down the inside. What's going to happen here? Lovely manoeuvre. Duncan Foss through, and Sean oh. comes back on the inside. Well, but Duncan's Duncan. got the advantage uh, as they come into the sweep, and De Villiers right behind him, and There's they're side problem. by side. And this was to be expected. Oh, this was to be expected. One is going to have a lot of things to say about this one. Um, I, on first impression, would think it's simple a racing accident incident uh, from the Linda and, um, and Duncan Foss who were side by side going into that turn. You really can't go through, through that firewall sweep side it's by side. It's from the Linda coming into the pits with a very, very bent BMW, the wing hanging off there. I guess the team are... There goes the wing mirror, that's off. And what's going to happen? The team are going to tear it off and are they going there yet well they've had a lot of bodywork uh, repair to do this weekend the bmw team so they're not uh, going to be uh, too phased about repairing that car well jonathan i don't know what other damage has been done to that car but here's another look at that incident from duncan Foss's car for the linda is ahead of him it is his corner Foss keeps his flat on the accelerator and duncan i'm afraid this one is on you bud <laughs> the damaged car of uh, Duncan, Duncan Foss. Foss. A very bent, and it was actually bent after the Kyle Army race as well, if you remember, <laughs> when uh, him and Sean van der Linde had, a, had the same coming together, I think. Lots of drivers are up breaking themselves in the Honda Hairpin to Anthony Taylor there. And, and there's van der Linde, they're jacking that car up, they uh, put the compressed air on the back, it jacks the car up with the jacks that are built into the car. But that looks like the end of Sean van der Linde's oh, race. Now we've got a nice little battle for the lead in the Banks and Pro car category. The uh, car in the front, that's the Netstar Spaniard car of Colin Hasty. He won the last uh, two races very, very comfortably out at Kyle Army. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be that comfortable in this incident, in this instance, where uh, Jordan Sainz is just about a second behind him, or was at the end of the previous lap. Very, very fast through that uh, hangar sweep and the car almost getting out of shape. Uh, George Desaino has found some extra power since his last time at Kyle Army and now he is really right there and ready to challenge for the lead in the Banks and Pro car category in this race. These are positions three and four, Anthony Taylor and Terry Moss. L look at this, as teammates they're going to be uh, battling themselves it looks like. Again, no team orders. We have uh, a privateer, Terry Moss in front in fact. So Anthony Taylor just gives him a bit of a nudge behind says, I'm here Terry. But Terry Moss from Port Elizabeth, this really is the man who's done wonders to the Aldo Scribanti circuit. Just to, to complete that point about Marco Dos Santos, last year he, as privateer, drove in a right-hand drive Nissan Primera, of course, and now he's in the uh, left-hand drive BMW. And uh, that means that your angle uh, of vision, to uh, put it that way, is different than what it used to be, and uh, you have to get used to it. And every time that he gets to a circuit now, although he does know the circuit, uh, he has to learn that circuit actually uh, right from the word scratch. So there we see Sean Watson-Smith with the lights ablaze because he's going to start lapping people. There's Janil de Villiers in second position. He is about two and a half seconds now behind Sean Watson-Smith. A lot of work going to be done there to actually catch him up. Catch him up. Third and fourth is... And uh, Terry Moss and Anthony Taylor in the two-engine Audis. Fifth position at the moment, the first 
or the second Petronas Opal of Dion Joubert. So it's going to be good this race for Opal, it looks like. Well, the uh, race is now 11 and a half laps old. There are still plenty more laps to go, and things can still change. We keep on saying that, but we've seen it in the past. Uh, the gap between Watson Smith and De Villiers might be just over two and a half seconds at this point, but uh, you can be sure that De Villiers, when he gets closer, or when he smells blood, he will start getting closer. Terry Moss locking up break. that back wheel again, Hendrick. He had handling problems at Kyle Army, we'll remember, from the last two rounds. Uh, they seem a lot better, the engine houses, this time. Okay, here's our race leader. That is Sean Watson Smith. That is Geniel De Villiers. And uh, they are closely closing in on Marco de Cunha, the man who is third in the Dankson Pro Cars uh, Smoke category. Smoke once again from Moss. Well, one can probably call that brake problems. <laughs> um, he's hitting the brake very hard, locking up every time that he hits the brake. That can't be good for the tyres. They're still running on Dunlop tyres, all of them. Uh, the uh, Continental people are still developing tyres for the uh, Dankson series. And those we'll be seeing at the uh, first race at the Pakisa circuit in Belcombe, which is the next round of the Touring Car Series. There's Dion Joubert, there's Marco de Santos and Mark Peters. Unfortunate for Mark this race uh, to go out on the first lap after he'd done so well in qualifying. And he was saying if he'd just not blipped the accelerator in qualifying, he would have got pole position because he was only uh, one tenth of a second behind Sean Watson Smith. But um, Mark. I don't know, his season seems to have started the same way as it finished last year. Great in qualifying, and then when it gets to the race, he just seems to... Right, do now it. things can happen. This is a race leader trying to get past the slower cars, the pro, pro cars. And, um, and look in the background, Marco de Santos has gone out. Marco de Santos has gone off on the entrance to the start-finish. And the, what happened here is that because of the leaders coming through and getting involved in the pro car battle now george the side note in the bp uh, nissan dealer team is right up there with with colin hasty and they have to give way for the faster cars both of them no, and until the williams goes through and hasty goes very wide that will give the side note a chance to close up on them on him but now hasty pulls away again lap 14. It's very difficult. If you see the, the uh, Nissan Premier of Janil de Villiers, the Nissan Premier of George de Sainte, they look very, very similar. They are, in fact, from the same team, the Pro Car. Slightly detuned touring car. You can tell the difference. The Pro Car has a black stripe across the top of the windscreen, and the main touring cars have the red stripe. Starting lap 15 out of 20, 2.8 seconds, the gap between race leader Sean Watson-Smith and Janil de Villiers, and he is not catching... De Villiers is definitely not catching Watson Smith. Hard on the brakes once again by Terry Moss. And here comes Dion Joubert. It's uh, not... Uh, Dion Joubert goes position. past Marco uh, de Cunha. Marco de Cunha there in the third of the pro cars. Here's Duncan Foss and Marco de Santos. It's the right-handed hairpin. And Duncan Foss this, this time goes through. Does not go wide like he did earlier on. And uh, the Santos is not going to be impressed by that one, definitely not. Our race leader is on his final lap, a little bit ahead of him. There he is. There's our race leader, Sean Watson-Smith, who is well on his way to his first victory of the season. And it's great, I think, for the championship that we have a different winner as well. So Neil De Villiers is about three and a half seconds further down in second place. He's going to take that second position unless something goes wrong for him. But Sean Watson-Smith doing exactly what he needs to do to get in amongst the contenders for the title this year. He was looking for a win early on in the season, and he seems like he's going to get it. Well, when I spoke to Sean earlier today, he said the car was set up. He was fastest yesterday in qualifying. He was fastest in warm-up this morning, and this is absolutely brilliant. On his home track, he's going to be absolutely delighted as he crosses the line, and he's coming there now. He's going to have about a three-and-a-half-second lead over Janil de Villiers. There is our winner, Sean Watson-Smith, and second position last year's champion, Janil de Villiers, in the BP Nissan. The third is Terry Moss. Your Jaber comes through in fourth. Uh, Anthony Taylor in first. Mark Peters finishes sixth in the pro-car category. Colin Hasty takes it from George the Sagan. Two seconds between the two of them. Marco de Cunha finishing in third. Sean, start to finish, you must be delighted with that result. Yeah, I'm ecstatic. You know, all the work, all the planning has been geared towards winning the championship this year. And this is really the start. I really believe that we're going to be a strong challenger at every round. We're going to put as much pressure as we can on the Nissan team. And, um, we're not as quick as we want to be right now. 
because Janil was carrying 50 kgs and he's doing sort of the same lap times as me. So we know we still got work to do, but this is this is the start that we needed. And at my home circuit, I, I, I cannot ask for better. Nissan 1 2 3 on the fr front row of the grid. Neil de Villiers, defending champion, getting pole position once again. This is his third of the season. Absolutely, Hendrik, third of the season. He is going to be the man to beat. He's carrying no additional weight at all, so it's going to be interesting. Mark Peters, his teammate on the right-hand side, had a disaster in, uh, on, the, on, on round three. Went off on the uh, first lap. Let's see what happens this time. No disaster this time, at least not yet, as uh, Genil de Villiers takes the lead from pole position. We have Duncan Foss slotting into second position. On the inside, it is Mark Peters, and the whole field gets through Lakrepko corner safely so far. No mishaps yet, and the three Nissans are leading round four of the championship through the Continental Essen. And the only man who is able to threaten them at this point is Anthony Taylor in the engine Audi. And the good news to see Brian Martin back. He had a broken throttle cable in the first race on the previous round as Mark Peters takes a look down the inside of Duncan Foss and Anthony Taylor is also right there as well through Honda Hairpin and Camille de Villiers is beginning to pull away now Duncan Foss still holding down second position he is certainly going to make sure that nobody else gets past him if he's not able to challenge de Villiers de Villiers is in fact still carrying 50 kilograms of his ball and Anthony Taylor drives down the inside of Mark Peters there's going to be trouble here to a good year corner but Fortunately for them, they get through in uh, single file in uh, at the end of a, a round, lap number one, and it's the uh, Villiers from the uh, force from Peters Taylor, Sean van der Linde in fifth, Watchman Smith, the winner of the previous round in sixth position, Terry Moss is seventh, Dion Joubert is in eighth position, then Neil Stephen, who has also recovered from his disaster in the previous round, he's in ninth, and Marco de Santos not having a happy weekend, he's in tenth position. Well, Marco uh, in that rebuilt BMW, but it, the, as it stands at the moment they're exactly the same as when they started De Villiers, Foss, Peters Anthony Taylor is the man to watch he, he, we saw him have a look down the inside of Peters just then he's going to have another look now as they come into the in, uh, hairpin no, not this time, not close enough to Peters this is allowing Daniel De Villiers to get away and really if they're going to catch uh, him they've got to get past now we've got 20 laps we're uh, on lap number 2 just coming up to the end of lap number 2 anyway but Taylor really has to go for it and uh, Sean van der Linde doesn't seem to be doing uh, much. He's being threatened by Sean Watson-Smith, winner of round three, in that uh, first of the Patronus out Opal. Doesn't seem to be anywhere near this time, Hendrik. It's absolutely amazing how different uh, the cars are performing in this round to uh, just a little bit earlier on the same day in round three. Race order at the end of lap two. Genil de Villiers now 0.7 of a second ahead of his teammate, Duncan Foss. Watson-Smith just taking a look down the inside there of Sean von Linde, but also not quite close enough. Well, if this is going to be professional, I don't think it's a good thing, but I don't think it's the way it's going to end. There are things developing right throughout the field. Mark Peters still holding down third. Anthony Taylor is dropping back in for Sean von Linde is under pressure from Sean Watson-Smith in uh, the battle for fifth and sixth position Terry Moss is there also goes. coming through and Watson Smith has uh, taken him that's Watson what we needed has taken him. that's what we needed Sean uh, von der Linde seems to be holding the field up we'll see now if Watson Smith can actually get away and get up behind Anthony Taylor and threaten that uh, that Audi but he's got a lot of uh, gap to make up there yes we're only on lap number two of 20 but um, it is rather processional at the moment from the Nissans there they are Janil de Villiers Duncan Foss Mark Peters Followed by Anthony Taylor, Sean Watson-Smith, and there's Fundalinda, Terry Moss, and Dion Joubert. And there's the battle to watch in this race so far. It's the battle between uh, Terry Moss in the engine Audi and Dion Joubert, who is looking down the inside and threatening. He's really looking threatening here. Joubert has not um, uh, realized the potential that he that he undoubtedly has in this in this race. Uh, also, not in the previous race, and uh, he is struggling with a car that's a little bit down on power. And uh, he is now looking at Terry Moss in seventh position. Well, the uh, bad news for the rest of the field is that the Audis at the next round in April at Pakiza will have new engines and more powerful ones at that.
Well, Dion Joubert seemed to have got better in the last round as the race went on. And he seemed he's all over the back of Terry Moss there. And there we get, join the pro cars. As in the first race, Colin Hasty. There's George Vesadner, last year's champion in the Bankpin Pro Car Series. Third position is Marco de Cunha, and right behind him, Brian Martin in the new Toyota. I was talking to Brian a little bit earlier at Pakisa. He will have a second car here. And hopefully we're going to see those new Jettas there in the Pro Car Series as well. Let's have a look here he's now. He's got him now. He's a yes, well played. He Wonderful driving there by Dion Jubert. And it's Van der Linde who slows down. Sean Van der Linde in the leading BMW is slowing down. And this is bad news for the team. This is something they definitely do not need. And they were hoping for a good weekend this weekend. It has been a little bit disastrous. They were. Uh, Sean had an accident in the in the first leg. He's now looks like he's going to retire. Marco De Santos, of course, had terrible accident in qualifying. They had to rebuild the car over the weekend. So uh, BMW and Aldo Scrabanti for these two rounds of the Touring Car Series has not been a good one. On lap six now, still the race order remains the same at the front of the field, but it is not certain what is going to happen further back. And Sean van der Linde in the background, just moving into the pits. So he's raced, he's run a bad weekend for van der Linde, unfortunately. But this is the battle between Terry Moss and Dion Joubert. Uh, Moss has passed Joubert again. That's the uh, stricken car of Sean van der Linde in the pits. And there is no, that car is not going anywhere. No. Here's the battle for the lead in the Bankman Pro Car category. It's still uh, Colin Hasty in the Ponyard Netstar car, followed by the BP Nissan dealer team car. Both of them missing primeras of George the side note and the side note would dearly like to get past Colin Hasty. Hasty's already won uh, three out of three races so far and uh, uh, the side note knows that for him to defend his title successfully this year, he needs to start winning. This is still the battle between Anthony Taylor and Sean Watson-Smith, but Dion Joubert really has caught up over... Um, there. Taylor go a bit offline and Watson Smith has a look but uh, Joubert really has caught the map fantastically and uh, I think he's the man to be watching at the moment. Taylor moves over left this is going to be interesting Watson Smith should Moss get the inside line is Dion Joubert going to go through as well? Moss has got a problem definitely. He certainly has. He will not allow anybody through that easily and Terry Moss has got a problem now he's got the two opals all over him. Watson Smith already got past and now Dion Joubert moves past him into uh, seventh position. Fifth position. Fifth position. Yeah. So we've got the three Nissans first, we've got the two Opals second, and then we've got the two Opals behind, uh, two Audis behind them. So it really is a little bit of a runaway for the three Nissan Primeras of Daniel de Villiers, Duncan Foss and Mark Peters. In car we go with Terry Moss now. Ooh, and he's uh, struggling a little bit with the handling of his car just ahead of him. His teammate Anthony Taylor, and it seems like smoke pouring out of this car. He's slowing down, and Terry Moss moves fast. Anthony Taylor it seems like his race is run. George Bertano has oh. got past him there. That Colin Hasty must have either made a mistake or the superior power of the BP car got past Colin Hasty. George will be delighted with this, but let's have a look to see if Colin yeah. Hasty. There is Anthony Taylor out of the race. Now that was a bit of a surprise, we didn't pick his problem up, we picked up Terry Moss's problem though. Yeah, well this, uh, this race is certainly turning out uh, some surprises for us, and non not the least of which is this one. George Besaidnate now in the lead of the Bankton Pro Car category. There is some damage it seems to the nose area of the Colin Hasty car. I seem to uh, have picked up that, that uh, nose section is a little bit loose on the right hand side. There might have been some contact there between the two of them, but uh, you know, that's racing. And Besaidnate is coming across the line in the lead. There's nothing between the two of them, only 0.4 of a second. And behind them, Brian Martin has also got past uh, Marco de Cunha. So Brian Martin up into third position. There they come. That's Brian Martin. Nice in to the see that, in that the Toyota Celtic. being a little bit more reliable. But here are the leaders. Janil de Villiers, Duncan Foss and Mark Peters. They're six seconds ahead of the first non-Nissan. That's Sean Watson-Smith in the first of the Patronus Opals. And this is what it looks like as we look back from the car of Duncan Foss to his teammate Mark Peters. Nobody is going to stop the Nissan superiority. This That's is Marco uh, de Cunha. Oh, Colin Hasty all over. The he was Something all over he the place. Must have gone off somewhere. Colin Hasty is having a disaster of a race. He's well, won all three races so far, and now all of a sudden he's down into fourth position. He must have gone off somewhere, and the, the car, as you say, is all over the place. It must have uh, some kind of a handling problem. Who knows? It could have been. Well, here comes Hasty on the outside of Brian Martin. He 
is a lot faster than that Toyota. Hopefully Brian Martin hasn't got a problem, but he certainly nearly came off then as uh, he went through that left uh, right-handed corner. And who is going to stop the Nissan uh, steam train this year? There's absolutely nobody else in the picture. If it's Neil de Villiers still leading Duncan Foss at Mark Peters, that's the way they're going to finish unless something disastrous happens now. And uh, Sean Watson-Smith and, uh, and, and the other Opel of Dion Joubert are uh, bringing up the rear in terms of the first five in this race. So only two more corners to go. There are the other two Opels. Neil de Villiers is going to win this one by a country mile. It seems so easy from the outside. I promise, promise you it is not that easy. Well, they certainly put um, everything into it to set a new lap record faster than he qualified during the race. That is quite unbelievable. 105.323 when he qualified in a 609. Here come the three Nissans of Janil de Villiers, Duncan Foss and Mark Peters. They're followed home in fourth position by Sean Watson-Smith and Dion Joubert in the second Opel. Right, let's just recap quickly for you in the uh, Dankson Touring Car category. And overall, of course, it's Neil de Villiers taking his third victory of the year. He's 36 of his career. And uh, that, that is uh, after only four races so far in this season, setting a new lap record as well for this track at uh, Aldous Cribanti in Port Elizabeth. Duncan Foss in second, Mark Peters for a third, Watson Smith, Hubert uh, fourth and first, Terry Moss in sixth position. And it is George Lusaitner to get his very first victory of the year in the Bankston Pro Car category. Oh, it's brilliant today. It's just, just uh, unbelievable. It's always difficult to know uh, whether the weight's going to affect you a lot towards the end. So you've got to push hard in the beginning, and uh, that's what I did. Uh, and balance actually stayed quite good right up until the end. Um, I'm very happy with the win because I think you need to take a few wins with the weight to, to try and win the championship. So I'm very happy. And so he should be three wins out of four races as the three Nissan drivers celebrate on the podium. Big crowd gathered also to celebrate the pro car category. George Bissoga taking his first victory of the season. Marco de Cunha in second place. And Colin Hasty still remaining at the top of the point standings in the pro car category. But it is Neil de Villiers who has a 16 point lead over Sean Watson Smith. We can also feel happy about that. And celebrations also for the victorious Nissan team. A familiar position for them. And they are now 61 points ahead of Opel after four races. Opel will be happy about second because they were fourth last year. Well, from Port Elizabeth, it's goodbye.